cute is that, but how big does it sound? It's right next to me and it's louder normally than I usually have amps because the cab is normally on the floor down there, that uh, little 2x12. That is a 1x10 in the Vox Mini Super Beetle head cabinet combination. Almost said combo then. Um, it's so much fun and this is a review of that amp but I want to start off by saying I've been playing it for about 30 minutes. I've got a range of tones out of it. It does sound like what it looks like but it's so small, so cute, and it's flipping brilliant. <laughs> There's actually a surprising amount of gain on tap as well. That was on three on the bridge volume. Let's put it up to 10. However, let's talk about the elephant in my room. That reverb is huge. So let's just back off that reverb a little bit. That's on a quarter. No, in fact, that's on a quarter reverb. Let's max the reverb and see what that does. <laughs> It's still there. Yeah, that reverb is absolutely huge. It's far too much, even at a quarter setting. So I'm gonna put it down between where I would never normally put a reverb on an amp. Um, about th less than a quarter, what, an eighth? Yes, an eighth. Some of you will understand that. Um, it, it's just, it's just wonderful. I, I should stop splurging over it and we should talk about some specs maybe. The Vox Mini Super Beetle, or the Vox MSB25, to give it its full name, runs at 50 watts at 4 ohms, at 25 watts at 8 ohms, which is what it's running at right now through its matched cab, and it runs at 12.5 watts through 16 ohms. The cab has a Celestian-designed 10-inch speaker in it called the G10R, and it sounds very much like a 10-inch speaker. Really, really pokey, not flabby at all, and will probably cut through in a mix. The amp controls are volume, reverb, which is digital, tremolo, which is new tube. We'll go over that in a moment. New tube, tremolo. We've got bass, treble, and gain, an input socket, and an on-off switch. There's also some controls around on the back of the amp, namely the eco switch, which is a power saving device. And if you turn it to on, when the amp receives no single after a certain amount of time, let's say 15 minutes, it, uh, it turns the amp off to save power, which is uh, some kind of regulation that things like this have to have these days. Thankfully, you can just switch it to the off position and it has no effect on the amp whatsoever. There's also a voicing. And in the instructions it says there's an EQ switch and then if you put it to flat, you should use a large cabinet so the sound is flat. And if you have a small cabinet, you should use the deep setting, which is the factory setting, which makes it thick and warm. I actually don't know what setting I've got it on right now. It's on flat, which kind of makes sense because I've boosted the bass a little bit uh, on the EQ to give me a bit more oomph. Let's turn that bass down and um, let's put the setting onto deep. In fact, no, let's compare the two. I'll play something with flat, uh, with a flat EQ, so that's everything at 12, and then I'll switch over to the deep setting and play the same thing. Right, I've been super geeky about this. I have recorded something via a DI box directly into my audio interface, and then I'm gonna reamp that through the Vox Mini Super Beetle. The first sound sample you'll hear is the uh, flat EQ setting. The second one will be the deep setting. And I'll put a third one in there as well over the headphone out socket, which is an emulated speakery out kind of thing. So here's the sound samples. <laughs>
So I've just listened back to that as well, and here are some observations. The deep and flat settings are noticeably different, but not night and day. It's just giving it that extra little boost for the deep setting, which is what I think this needs, because I was boosting the EQ on the amp by about a quarter. So it was up at three quarters rather than at 12 o'clock. And I definitely prefer that setting on this little cab. If you're using it on a bigger cabinet, then the flat setting is there to give you uh, a flatter sound, so you have more resonance from your bigger cab. Secondly, uh, the headphones sounds good. That is a usable out. It's a headphones slash line out. And I think that's more than usable for most applications. However, it seems to have a little less gain than what it actually sounds like through the speaker. So headphones, perfectly usable, doesn't sound exactly like it would to the cab, but which headphones out do? Uh, that is a usable and good sound. Let's play some more. It doesn't just do Beatles, by the way. Uh, let's put some pedals through it. I'll put a fuzz through it. I've just plugged in this, the Electro Harmonics uh, J Maskis Ram's Head Fuzz, but let's have a listen to the clean tone first. It's really quite something. <laughs> It's a really nice clean tone. It's quite fendery in in a in a modern uh, solid state sound. It, by the way, there's no tubes in this, or there's some new tubes. We haven't talked about that. We will. We will talk about the new tubes when I do the tremolo. Uh, but that's a really good clean tone. Anyway, fuzz. <laughs> That's a great fuzz tone, and often a fuzz pedal will unveil the failures of an amplifier. It's not failing through that. In the room, that sounds absolutely massive. Let's try something else. Let's try something tube screamery. I'm actually going to switch to a strap for this, but before I do, let's talk about this. It's a Stanford Crossroads Thinline 30 VS, and it's completely hollow, and it's got P90s, and it's very much like an Epiphone Casino, only far, far better. Uh, if you want more information about this guitar, there are links in the video description. <laughs> Dang, that is a good sound. That is the Moxie from Brian Wampler, which is his Bad Monkey kind of pedal. This is my Fender Strat, and that little mini Super Beetle sounds huge again. This is close to being, well, this is definitely one of my favorite amps that I've ever, ever played. And I've played a lot of amps, and not all of them make me so excited to play guitar. I'm gonna put another pedal through it, um, something, something different. Let's find a different pedal. Let's try this Vola in drop D uh, through the Rev G3. Let's have some clean first. Baby, we are not in Liverpool anymore. That is a cracking sound. It just sounds like good, just clean with that with that guitar.
it's deep. I hope that's coming across in the video. There's a lot of bass coming from that 10 inch speaker. It's so, so full. And then kick that in. This is a great pedal platform. Um, I've said it already just a, f a moments ago, I think, but definitely one of the best amps I've ever played through. What a surprise. Quel surprise. Um, what else can I do? Oh yeah, the tremolo. Okay, so speed. Let's go back to that Stanford uh, thin line. With that tram first. A little less gain, a little bit more volume. To be super critical, the trem, tremolo is a little too deep for me. So it, it's, it's rushing, and that speed, that's the speed I want. Yeah, it's a bit deep, but I'm really happy it's there. So that's a new tube tremolo, which I genuinely don't know what that is, but I guess they're saying it's like a tube tremolo, but they're using a new tube, which is that small tiny thing that came from like displays or something, but it's, it's a modern valve, a modern tube thing, uh, he says as he's looking through the instructions to try and find out if it says anything, which I don't think it does. Tremolo, turn fully counterclockwise to turn off the effects. Okay. I think the tremolo sounds nice. I just have it a little bit less deep, but I can see why they've done it that way to make it more extreme. <sighs> let's summarize this. Um, let's 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 see how loud it goes. Actually, how loud does it go? Uh, I'm going to put some earplugs in. Wait a minute. Okay, that is max volume. Earplugs are in. I've got the Strat. Let's gain about a quarter. Let's do gain about halfway. that earplug that is that is super loud that is much louder than is comfortable let's try three quarters game Strats. Okay, um, that's not crazy loud. It is not crazy gain either on single coils, but I haven't tried any humbuckers through it. Let's do that quickly. I was expecting bridge tones, I was on the neck pickup. <laughs> Thank you. 
Fantastic amplifier. Um, what a fantastic amp. That is gain all the way up, volume all the way up. I'm probably shouting right now. Uh, bass at 12 and treble at 3 o'clock. What a great amp. Uh, that's the Heritage H150 Custom Core, by the way. Everything I've put through this amp has been absolutely blinding. There is some setting on this mini Super Beetle that makes every guitar and every pedal that I've put through it just sound fantastic. And I very, very rarely am so a wax, so lyrical and, and so positive about something that looks cute and is tiny and maybe go, oh, isn't that adorable? That is a wolf in sheep's clothing, I think is the expression. What a great amp. Darn it. Um, cons, okay, cons, let's just turn it off for a second. Con is that the reverb on it is far too big and I've had it on less than a quarter the entire time through this video, pretty much. Although I guess it's nice to have it. It's a big hall reverb rather than a spring. So the reverb's not my favorite, but it's nice to have it there and it will help things sound a little bit more uh, comfortable. The tremolo does go really, really deep, but it's a good one knob trem. Uh, the EQ is powerful, very, very powerful. I don't think there's any need for a mid knob and good because there isn't one. The only wonder is if it's loud enough for gigs, I would say no, but it is loud enough certainly to mic up and sound great uh, through a PA system. So th I thought that was just gonna be something I'd wanna put in my living room and look nice to show that, you know, we have a nice little sort of looking, um, there we go, put that, you know, rest it against that. It looks nice and make nice photos. Wrong. That is a killer amp and you should buy it, 100%. Links in the video description. Don't even think about it if you're on the fence. Go and buy it. It is 100% fantastic. You've made it to the end of the video, which means you are a member of the end of the video club. And to prove that you are a member of this prestigious elite, when you leave me a comment telling me what you think about the mini Super Beetle, please also include the phrase, let it be loud. And that let me know that you watched this part and it will give us a giggle and YouTube will reward me by pushing this video up the charts because people have commented on it. Also, by the way, stick a thumbs up on it, you know, or a thumbs down, just in interact in some way to prove that you've made it this far and either have a great time or had a terrible time. If you're in the middle, then, then that's my fault. But if you had a great time or a terrible time, you're welcome. Yeah, thank you to Vox for sending this out. I've had a really jolly time, I hope you have too. Those are other videos over there that you can watch that have me in them. There's a subscribe button down there if you really, really enjoyed yourself and want to come back and see more videos from me. Otherwise, it's been, uh, it's been a pleasure talking to you about this amplifier and playing guitar for you. Goodbye.